All right, welcome to Webster Grove School District, 8th grade science. This is the Foundations Unit Goal 4 video notes. Our goal here is to clearly communicate data using graphs. In order to meet this goal, students will be able to represent data in a graph. In that graph, you need to show your title with your independent and dependent variable in the title, your data is on the correct axis with the correct labels and you have correct units and scale and you're able to explain the relationship between the two variables. The notes here are going to cover these three things. Um, this last one, this part right here, this will be covered in class as well as how to predict data. Okay, So we're going to primarily look at this chunk of the goal here. Okay, so here we go. In order to, in order to put this into context, I'm going to give you a brief study. So here's our question: Does the type of liquid affect the dissolved time of Alka-Seltzer? And some of you may be saying, "What's Alka-Seltzer?" Here, here's an old school commercial to remind you. Nice. Yeah, commercials don't get but much better than that. I think that one is actually older than I am. So, But that's Alka-Seltzer. It's the tablets that you put into uh, liquid and they fizz and they bubble. They give off carbon dioxide gas. Okay, so I'm looking at does the type of liquid, all right, so type of liquid, that's our independent variable, affect the dissolved time, that's our dependent variable. Okay, so let's look at this. For a good graph, we're going to need five things. The first thing is you're going to need the title with the independent and dependent variable in the title. So that would be like the effect of the type of liquid on the dissolved time of Alka-Seltzer. Number two, you're going to need your independent variable labeled on the x-axis and your dependent variable labeled on the y-axis. Okay. So remember x-axis is this way y-axis is going this way. Okay. So make sure those are labeled. Number three, remember you can pause this video at any time if you need it to slow down. Units are used with the independent variable and the dependent variable and they're labeled. So if you have a unit of measurement, make sure that it is labeled especially on the y-axis. Um, you won't always have units with your independent variable, but almost all of the time you'll have it with your dependent variable. Number four, you need consistent spacing and numbering with the y-axis. Okay, So what I mean by that is, let's say on your y-axis here, okay, maybe you go up by fives. Okay, So you want to make sure that you go up by fives each time and that the space in between your lines is even. Okay, This isn't exactly even. Hopefully you would do this on graph paper so that it is even. The fifth one, if you have multiple trials or data sets, make sure to only graph the mean. I've seen st students struggle before trying to graph every single trial and then when they get done they really can't tell me anything about their graph or, or what it means. So make sure you only graph the mean of the data if you have multiple trials or multiple sets of data. Okay, Mean is like the average. Same thing. Alright, so let's look at a graph. So if we were graphing the Alka-Seltzer experiment, okay, let's flip back. Does the type of liquid affect the dissolved time of Alka-Seltzer? Okay. So we need a good title with independent and dependent variables in there. Here's our title. The effect of the liquid, here's our independent variable, on the time it takes Alka-Seltzer to dissolve, there's our dependent variable. Okay. 
having an understanding of independent and dependent variables is vital to making making a graph here. Okay, so we label our dependent variable on that y-axis, and we have consistent spacing in between the numbers and in this case we're going up by 15 so we need to make sure that we're going up by 15 each time and we have our label okay the time to dissolve Alka-Seltzer in seconds that's our label and I've labeled units which is seconds okay here's a label for the x-axis the independent variable we have types of liquids and then we have each type. Okay, it's very important to have both of these. You need a label for each bar, and you need a label for the x-axis. Okay, so that is it. Um, make sure you have dependent variables and independent variables labeled, and make sure you have your units labeled and consistent spacing with a title that has your independent and dependent variables in it. Okay? So, let's check and make sure that we have everything. Alright? Do you have a title with independent and, bear and dependent variable in title? Yes, you do. Okay, they're both there. Independent variable labeled on x-axis. Yes, down here. Dependent variable labeled on y-axis. Yep, got it right here. Check units with the independent and dependent variable are labeled okay we only had one unit and that was seconds and it is labeled we have consistent numbering and spacing along the y-axis we have an even amount of space in between each number and we're going up by 15 each time multiple trials or data sets make sure to only graph the mean okay so in this case we had multiple trials and this was the mean of all of the trials for water, all of the trials for, for Coke, and all of the trials for Sprite. So, yes, we've done that. Okay? So, looks, looks pretty good. This is what we're expecting for graphing. Okay? So, bring questions and uh, bring any, anything else you got to class tomorrow and we'll practice graphing tomorrow. Thanks for watching.